Hey everyone, Mark here. And today we'll be discussing a powerful tool within BeFree app that'll help you take your email personalization game to the next level. This feature is display conditions. And with display conditions, you can customize how the information in your BeFree rows display and who they display to. Throughout this video, we'll walk you through an example of how you can create one row within BeFree app that dynamically displays information from multiple products based on the contact properties within HubSpot. To make this happen, we'll be using merge tags and display conditions together. The cool thing about this combo is that it lets us create a single row that loops through your contacts products, which really saves you time. You won't have to stress about manually adding a new row now for each product. Throughout this video, we'll use HubSpot as our example CRM. However, it's important to keep in mind that the BeFree platform is agnostic, meaning that you can use our builder to set up display conditions for any sending platform out there. The most common scenario for display conditions within HubSpot is setting up loops, useful for sending abandoned cart emails, for instance. This will help you send personalized content to a certain segment. For this example, it's also important to know in advance how many products are in your contacts properties. For example, you can segment your contacts by categories such as added two products to cart or added three products to cart and so on. In this example, let's focus on the segment for added two products to cart. Now, before we begin, let's quickly break down the different sections or chapters of this tutorial. First, we'll discuss prerequisites for this task. Then we'll move on to creating contact properties in HubSpot. We'll show you how to add merge tags to your BeFree design as well as how to create display conditions. Then we'll move on to exporting your BeFree design to HubSpot. And finally, we'll show you how to preview your email in HubSpot. Now, before adding display conditions to your BeFree email template, make sure you have all the necessary information, including your customer's product data, ready to add to HubSpot. Typically, e-commerce platforms will provide you with JSON format data. That includes customer information and product information. An example of customer information is a customer's email address, and an example of a product's information is its price, image, or price URL. Now, later in this video, we'll guide you through manually adding data from a JSON file to a contact's properties in HubSpot. If you'd rather automate this process, though, you can use the HubSpot API and run a script. But keep in mind, HubSpot can't process JSON directly. That's why running your own script to pre-process the data is necessary for automation. You can find the steps for this in our technical documentation linked in the description. Now in this example, we'll be using the following JSON file. Here, you'll notice product name and its value, green shirt. We can also see the price, $19.99, and the quantity, which is one. This is how much of the product the customer has added to their cart. Below, we have the product's image and the product URL. And so here we have one product, which is a green t-shirt. And if we scroll down, we'll see we have another product, which is green shorts. Let's now run through an example of how to add one of these product values in HubSpot. That brings us to the next chapter, how to create contact properties within HubSpot. So now that we have our customer's data, we can manually add it inside of HubSpot. Now to do this, we need to first create properties to put the data into. And as we just mentioned, let's go ahead and create these properties as contact properties. Here are the steps to do so. So first off, make sure you're logged in to HubSpot and we're in the contacts page, which can be found inside the CRM. Now we'll wanna click on the customer we need to add data for. And once you're inside their contact page, we can navigate to actions, view all properties. In order to add a new contact property, I'm going to click Manage Properties and then click Create Property. You'll notice a side panel appears. We can add the object type, group, label, and description here. Now in this example, we're going to set object type to Contact, Business Unit to Business Unit 1, which is the account we've set up in Be Free, and for Group, we'll select Contact Information. Now again, this is based on our example that we're showing you here. And so you can customize this for your own needs based on the scenario that you're working with. Okay, for label, we're going to create our first label and call it product one image. 
Uh, we can add a description here, but because it's optional, let's skip it for now. For the field type, let's select single line text. And now underneath here, you can see a preview of how your new property will appear under your contact information in HubSpot. So we can click next. And before we create this new property, we're going to want to make sure we've checked the box under property visibility that says show in forms, pop-up forms, and bots. When we're happy with it, we can hit create. This property field will now be available under contact information for each of your contacts. Once we've manually created all of the new properties we need, we can navigate to our contacts properties. Below the contact information section, if we scroll down here, you'll notice these properties have been added, such as product one image, product one name, product one price, and product one quantity. Now you can also see the same fields, but for product two. What we're going to do now is complete the task that we teased earlier in this video, which is to add in the values for these properties. For example, let's find the value for product one image. Remember, we pulled this info from our JSON file. So let's navigate back over to our JSON, find the word image and copy this here. We can then navigate back over to HubSpot and paste the value in this field here. Click enter and save the change. And as you can see, we pre-filled some of the fields already to speed things up. But when you're working on your own, make sure to complete all of these fields using the data from your JSON file. Now with the data added to our HubSpot contact properties, the next step is to return to be free and apply merge tags and display conditions syntax to our design to create the product loop. Let's start with merge tags though, which are placeholders for specific data to populate when you send your email. Now the merge tag syntax we'll use in this example can be found in the Be Free Help Center documentation. And we'll apply the syntax to create new merge tags in Be Free. However, we've already added them to our workspace to save time. We can view them by navigating to our workspace settings and scrolling down to the merge tag section under HubSpot. Now the way we added these merge tags is simple. So on the same page, just head to add a new merge tag and type in the merge tag name, sample content, its syntax, and the category or sending platform it belongs to, which in this example is HubSpot. Once all the fields are complete, we can hit confirm. And that's how you create custom merge tags in Be Free. Now that we've created all the custom merge tags we need, it's time to add them to our design. We'll insert the merge tags into this row of the email template where key product information is displayed. So let's switch out this information now, starting with home candle. So we need to change this to our product's name. So we can click on merge tags, go to HubSpot, search for product name, and click on it. You'll notice that the sample content will appear, which works as a placeholder. Below this, we have this text here, which we don't really need. So we can delete it. Now for quantity, we want to keep the word and add a merge tag beside it. So let's click merge tags again, navigate to HubSpot, and click product quantity. Great. We can also do the same thing for price. So hit merge tags again, go to HubSpot, and hit product price. Okay, awesome. We've added our merge tags here. Now I have this image, and our goal here is to have this image pull in the URL that was saved within HubSpot, which was copied from our JSON. And so what we need to do is click on this image, navigate to the sidebar, click on dynamic image, and enter a dynamic URL. Now where do we find that? Well for this, I'm going to go back to the documentation. That way I can go ahead and copy the syntax for product image. So here it is here. And once we copy it, we can then head back to be free and paste it in the dynamic URL field. Now you'll notice that we have a button here as well. Uh, for the link type, I'm going to leave it as open web page. And then I'm going to copy the syntax for product URL, head back to be free and paste it here. Now we've added all of the merge tags we need inside this row. It's important to remember that since merge tags are dynamic, 
We don't need to create a separate tag for each product and its details. We just need to create one set of merge tags and the display condition we set up will automatically go through them one by one. In the next step, I'll show you what I mean. Now that merge tags are set up, we're ready to add display conditions to the row containing them. To do this, take the following steps. Click on the row, navigate to the sidebar where we have our row properties, scroll down to where we see dynamic content, and then click add condition. A modal will then appear. We can see a few fields like name, description, before, and then after. First, let's give our new display condition a name. Let's name it product loop for HubSpot email. Next, let's add our description. We can say loop through a contacts product information. After that, we'll need to add some syntax for before and after. What we're going to do is navigate over to our Help Center article and copy the syntax that's already been created. We'll then head back to Be Free and paste it in the before field. We'll do the same thing for the after syntax. And so copy this syntax here and then paste it in the after field. Now this syntax will initiate a loop that iterates through the various products associated with a contact's properties, such as product name, product image, and other product information until the loop is complete. So here we define the loop to complete after two products. That's why when we started this video, we mentioned that this segment would be for folks who added two products to their cart. If you wanted to change the syntax or customize it for a different segment, you would just need to change the range here. To change this to three products, you would simply replace the three with a four. Now that we're happy with our display condition, we can go ahead and hit confirm. Great, we've saved the condition and we can see that it has appeared under dynamic content now in the sidebar menu. Okay, great. We're finally ready to export our design to HubSpot. Now a quick heads up before we do so. Some email platforms like HubSpot require specific merge tags to be included in your email designs. This is to ensure that each email is personalized, properly formatted, and compliant with their system standards. So make sure you include these merge tags here in your footer. When you're ready to export your email, the process is simple. Hit export in the top right hand corner, select push to your sending system, find HubSpot, and then click create. Okay, great. Our email template has been created. Now we just need to click this link here and we'll be directed to our email in HubSpot. Now that we've successfully exported our design, it's time to preview it in HubSpot. So here's our template in HubSpot, where you can see the syntax for both product one and product two. Now, if you remember, we only included one row in our design. So if we navigate back to be free, you'll notice, yeah, just one row here. But thanks to the syntax that we used, a second row appears automatically. That's the power of the product loop, which will save you a ton of time, especially when dealing with multiple products in different customers' carts. So let's preview this email now as a contact to see our display condition and merge tags in action. So let's choose the contact Jane Doe. And you'll notice the email now says, hi Jane, we saw your cart, great choices. And if we scroll down here, we can see two different images. This is thanks to the syntax we used for product image. We can also see the product name, so yellow t-shirt and yellow shorts. We can see the quantity, so how much was added to the cart, along with the price. And finally, if we were to click the CTA purchase now to make sure it works, it should direct us to Target's website, which it does. Awesome, it worked perfectly. Now keep in mind, we use sample data for this JSON, and so the use of Target's website here is purely for demonstration purposes only. Okay, let's pick another contact to see what items they've added to their cart. This time, let's go with Zaire. You'll see their cart contains a green t-shirt and green shorts instead. Awesome, we've successfully displayed the correct products and their details for both contacts while generating two distinct rows as well. Okay, all that's left now is to confirm that everything looks good so you can send the email to your chosen user segment. With display conditions set up correctly, the row will automatically fill in the content based on your contacts information in HubSpot. 
And that's it for this video. We hope this walkthrough helped you feel more confident about using display conditions to create dynamic, personalized content in your emails. Thanks for watching.